Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your continued investment in our community. I think, I think we all already know the power of our community together. And it's always just astonishing seeing people from so many backgrounds come together so we can create solutions and not necessarily live in silos like Robert was saying earlier today. So today we'll have our fireside chat. So of course, for legal reasons, we don't have an actual fire, um, <laughs> but maybe you may feel some fire internally within your hearts. What we'll talk about today is internships and apprenticeships. So does everybody remember their first job? Yeah. Everybody? I know my first one was McDonald's. It was great. Yeah, I, I ate too many of the Big Macs, so I had to get a new job. But um, it was a great experience, but I will say this. I wish I would have met one of these two individuals, whether Faith or Ann, earlier, because then I could have maybe been investing in my career. Maybe I could have created some steps to move my career, my passions forward through an intentional focused program, whether that's internships or apprenticeships. And that's what we're gonna talk about now, not from my old experience, but from you as employers, as we talk about some of the gaps within hiring or upskilling or keeping employees, maybe there's a diamond or rough opportunity that we're not thinking about is creating an internship or apprenticeship within your program. Maybe that's a position that we can redefine. Maybe there's a population of students that we can create uh, excitement for our industry for. And we're gonna let some of our experts talk about that today. So just a little bit of framework. I want to be a teacher unless I give you some framework and learning outcomes. So we will be introduced to our different panelists. We'll talk a little bit about their backgrounds and they'll give you context to what an internship is and what an apprenticeship is. We have one of our power users, I would say, uh, Serena, who does both on her campus uh, as well. And then we'll have some time for audience questions and we will leave. You have a little worksheet on your desk. Not desk, sorry, y'all adults and not students. Um, you have a little worksheet at your tables where we will write out some frameworks that may help you as you build these programs for the future. And don't forget as well, there's a QR code on your table, so if you want to download resources or understand how to continue this process later, you can be able to have those resources. So I'll start with uh, Faith Bryant. There you go, showing all the tea. Um, uh, her, her biography is, she serves as the Work Experience Coordinator for Daytona State College right here. Uh, she's a native of Hollywood, Florida. She started her career in employment staffing right out of high school because of a high school internship. So essentially, she completed a whole circle of life. Now she's creating opportunities because someone blessed her with an opportunity. I want y'all to keep that in mind. She worked in the staffing industry most of her career until transitioning from staffing to career counseling in 2013, working from career source, and now Daytona State College. Faith has had various roles from big vocational specialist, to the Hope Center, to admission specialist, um, and career advisor. She currently is the work experience coordinator for School of Technology at the Advanced Technology Campus at DSC, where she helps matching technology students with internships. She's also an adjunct professor in the school, teaching a course on necessary soft skills. She, has, she holds a BAS degree in supervision and management from DSC, and a master's in strategic communication from Troy University. I didn't make time, there's a lot of school right here. <laughs> um, Faith's career started with an internship, and now she helps students start their careers the same way. Give her uh, applause for Faith. <laughs> All right, and we also have my new friend here, Ann Everly. Ann serves as the Florida Department of Education Apprenticeships Training Representative for Region 6. A lot of title, man. Um, which supports Volusia Brevard, Indian River, Port St. Lucie, Martin, Okeechobee counties, and has more than 15 years of experience working in secondary ed as a program manager for Take Stock and Children and mentoring program for middle and high school students. And a pre apprenticeships and student internship coordinator for Brevard Public Schools Career Technical Education Program. And also <laughs> serves, <laughs> serves on the Brevard Schools Foundation. Take Stock and Children Leadership Council has a passion for helping students find successful career paths. Thank you. Give a round of applause for Ann. All right, and now we have on the screen somewhere in the world, we have Serena Fisher. Serena serves as the Director of Organizational Development and Learning at Halifax Health and as the President of the Volusia Flagler Sherm Chapter. We got some Sherm people in the house. Ooh, I knew we have one. Go. All right. Serena has held her HR leadership development roles in hospitality, higher education, healthcare, and the healthcare industry. She earned her PhD in human resource education from Louisiana State University in 2014. Serena holds a senior professional in human resources 
project management uh, certification and also project management PMP certification as a certified right path facilitator. She's a graduate of the Leadership Daytona class of 38, my classmate, and a member of the Boss Lady organization and the past president of the Daytona Beach West Rotary Club. She also serves on multiple workforce development task forces and in various district support roles for the Rotary. Give a round of applause for Serena. All right, so thank you all so much. So one quick question you want to ask the crowd for free to raise your hands. Does anybody have an internship or apprenticeship program at their business currently? I already have one, perfect. So all of this will be new knowledge. Oh, we, got we got some simmering. All right, so this will be all great new information. And I think I speak for our panelists that they are willing to help and have conversations after the fact if you want to develop these programs in your spaces. All right, so we will start off with Faith, just kind of giving us some background on internships and what does that look like and helping define those roles for us. Okay. So the internship is it's a part of experiential learning where you learn by doing. It's a component of the teaching environment um, in colleges. And so in order to be an intern, you would be a student studying something. And it's a way for you to take what you have, have uh, learned in the classroom and you have an opportunity to do it in a professional setting. So it, I explain to students that the um, businesses who bring you on, they're not looking for you to run their company. You shouldn't be looking for someone to run an apartment as an intern. They are there to learn and hopefully learn from experts who are doing it within your organization. Some businesses will choose to have a cohort of um, interns where they work on projects. It's project based, say, so something that's can do in your day-to-day -day operation, but it would be really great for you to do. Some, some businesses will have their interns do that, and some integrate them into their day-to-day -day workflow, where they are given responsibilities like an employee, and they are a part of the business. So that's what an internship is. Awesome, thank you for that context. Quick question, did anybody in the room do an internship in high school or college? Anybody had that experience? Okay. And now look, at, look who you are now. All right, thank you so much for sharing with that. Uh, Anne, you want to tell us a little bit about, about apprenticeships? So I'm going to read what the official uh, description is, and then I'm going to expand on that just a little bit. So registered apprenticeship is an industry-driven, high-quality career pathway where employers can develop and prepare their future workforce, and individuals can obtain paid work experience, receive progressive wage increases, classroom instruction, and affordable, nationally recognized credentials. Registered apprenticeship is our industry vetted and approved and validated by the U.S. Department of Labor and your state agency apprenticeship uh, agency, which is the Florida Department of Education. So basically, uh, apprentices are going to register to be in your registered apprenticeship program, which you're going to develop for yourself, your training plan, the things you want to give your employees. They're going to register, you're going to bring them on or they're already gonna be hired by you, you're just gonna put them in the apprenticeship program. They're gonna immediately start their on-the-job training portion. There's two parts to this. There's the related training instruction and the on-the-job training. They're gonna they're gonna be on the job every day working for you, assigned a mentor who's gonna work with them while they're learn, or, uh, working with that mentor. And then they're gonna have classes a few nights a week, online, whatever you decide with your related training instruction pieces. They're going to have a time that they're going to have to uh, work on the job training and related training instruction for a set amount of time for what that occupation is you're supporting. And once they finish that training, then they get that credential that um, they deserve, that certificate of completion. All right, thank you for that background. So I'm going to move, usually I would do this behind the stage, but y'all can see me. Um, I'm going to move a little closer so Serena can give us some background from her perspective with Halifax Health having both. So Serena, could you give us a little context on what does this look like at Halifax, um, having an internship and an apprenticeship program? Absolutely. Can you hear me all right? We hear you real good. Yep, perfect. <laughs> so at Halifax Health, we always say we're, we're a small city, right? We have everything from plumbers and baristas to brain surgeons. 
And that is fantastic because it allows us to serve our community, but it also gets a little challenging when we're trying to staff, right? So what we have, have tried to do is get as creative as possible. We, we have apprenticeships, we have internships, I, quite frankly, we have college students doing clinical rotations, part-time jobs, volunteers. We wanna open the door as wide as possible, but the key is trying to figure out what fits, what makes sense. Some of these are more structured, some of them are, are more long-term, some are more flexible. Faith mentioned some are project-based versus incorporating people in their day-to-day -day activities. You have to figure out what you need, what you're looking for, and then understand there are just so many different opportunities out there. It, it, it takes a little wrangling. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like you're the, the, the ringleader in a circuit is trying to figure out all the different programs and what's going to work for what you're looking for. But we have found that trying to incorporate apprenticeships, internships, and a myriad of other options it's really helped us meet a lot of our staffing needs, but also helps us give back to the community in terms of getting our next generation of workforce incorporated, prepared, aware of all the different opportunities around the community, things of that nature. Awesome, awesome. And we will hear from Serena again um, in a couple more questions. Sorry, I got short legs. It takes me a little bit to walk. Oh, thank you. So our next questions will be directed to Faith about the internship experience. You've already given us some great context about what an internship is, but for our, our busy business owners here, what what's the benefit look like for, from your perspective? Okay, so um, the benefit is endless. Uh, we follow uh, NACE guidelines for internships. NACE is the National Association for Colleges and Employers. And they survey businesses that participated in internships. And eight out of 10 of those businesses state that internships gives them the biggest return on investment from any recruiting strategy. So it is so important as a recruiting strategy to keep your um, self relevant with the education um, institutions because we are graduating the or when you'll be applying for your positions. And if you have these internship opportunities, you're on their radar well before graduation. If you extend these opportunities to students, oftentimes these students won't even look outside of your organization for full time, for first, their first full time employment because they've enjoyed that internship so much. So it's a great recruiting strategy. And also, to Sue's point, it is such a great way to give back. So even if you, you know, that the relationship doesn't um, last, that that person is not going to stay in the area and you move away, you then have planted a seed with that organization and it becomes that first employer sometimes, or just something that they know about. They will talk about it in your classes and you just have a greater reach when you participate in internships. Thank you so much. And another great way of retaining some of our young people in our community as well. Uh, so the next question, how, how do you mention getting in front of schools? How should our employers get in front of partners like you all to create these opportunities? Okay, so when it comes to internships, the best way um, to do that is to really be invested in the institution and find an institution that makes sense for your organization. So there are multiple colleges and universities in the area. We're really rich in education here, rich in Franklin County. We have East Jones State, where we are. We have Embry Riddle, um, Purdue Cookman, Stetson University, Florida Technical <laughs> College. Um, so, multiple opportunities. So, find the institution that makes sense for your organization. So, like DSC does not have aeronautical science, Embry Riddle does. So, if you're looking for aeronautical scientists, you want to create a relationship with Embry Riddle. DSC does have uh, electrical engineering. So if you're looking for that skill set, that's something that you can invest in DSC. So you want to find the right partner for you and your business needs, and then do more than just post a position. So Halifax has been a wonderful partner with DSC. 
So not only are they posting positions, they have scholarships for DSC students. Um, that is also a benefit. They come on campus, they do events. Just two weeks ago, maybe it was last week, Halifax totally saved the day for an event that I had planned. So just really being invested in the programs that you want to pull out of. So that's the best way to keep going. That's a great point. And also, like you were just saying, outside of just posting the position, can you speak to classrooms? <laughs> can you expose them to the industries that they may not be aware of? Sharing your expertise might be another great way to start that bridge to an internship. Um, so one of our, my last questions, how do you start? Like, where, where does, what does uh, the first level of starting this internship look like? So career services is usually the first place to start. You'll get connected with the institution's career services office, and then they can get you directed to a program if it happens there. But oftentimes, career services is the hub. You start there, and if there is something more that you need to learn, so for instance, with Halifax, uh, career services is a starting point, but then they will also be involved in the nursing department, um, maybe even um, patient care. They're heavily involved in the School of Technology because we send IT um, interns there. So you start with career services, and then they will help funnel you to the appropriate department that you want to connect with. All right, thank you so much. So we're going to switch over to Anne so we can learn more about apprenticeships. Um, so, Ann, first question, what sets registered apprenticeships apart from internships? What are those key differences? Well, generally, registered apprenticeship, um, for registered apprenticeship, it is a paid uh, experience. Um, there are lengths of time that are required for that. It's usually one to four years, usually, for registered apprenticeship. There's, um, and I, I know uh, internships do have structure. But the apprenticeship structure is structured training that is vetted and um, through the Department of Labor um, and then highly customizable by that employer. He actually, they develop that training based on what your needs are and that's how they develop that. Um, the mentorship, which is key to apprenticeship because it's that rate, that mentor, that journey worker on the job that's been doing the job for 25 years who, um, uh, is going to be standing by side beside that um, apprentice, apprentice, helping them learn, helping them do their job on the job training. Um, they, the pay it is a paid experience, and they have progressive pay. They start at a wage, and then they grow, and as they learn through the training, then they end at an ending wage. And then they do receive a credential when they're done that's nationally recognized. Um, and there are opportunities for college credit because part of registered apprenticeship is the related training instruction piece, which is the classroom side of it. And if um, the employer chooses to partner with Daytona State College, which we have several at Daytona State College, or um, any other of the other colleges that might support it, um, they can receive college credit for that as well. Awesome. So why would a, uh, we kind of talked about the differences, why would a business choose an apprenticeship? So there's many things. Number one, it's highly customizable to your needs, your training needs, and what you want to uh, train in. Um, sorry. It's access to a talent pipeline. One of the most significant benefits of registered for employers is the talent pipeline. With a registered apprenticeship program, employers have the opportunity to train the workforce in the specific skills and knowledge for your industry. Re reduce recruitment costs. Instead of searching for qualified candidates on job boards or through recruiting agencies, employers can develop a pool of candidates from within their current um, set, uh, employees. This approach, approach reduces the time and costs associated with recruiting and screening. Increased retention. Registered apprenticeships also have the potential to increase employee retention rates by investing in their employees' training and development. Employers demonstrate a commitment to their workforce. The commitment can lead to increased employee loyalty and job satisfaction, which in turn can result in lower turnover rates. Improved productivity. Employers, employees who go through registered apprenticeship are better equipped to perform their jobs effectively. With a combination of classroom and on-the-job training, apprentices receive hands-on experience and theoretical knowledge, which prepares them for real-world situations as a result, employers can expect to see increased productivity and higher quality of work and enhanced safety. And this is really an important one on the safety side of the house, especially in the construction trades and what have you. 
Um, I just was at a big um, construction um, event, and we did studies on registered apprenticeship and the safety of the training that they get, because that is a required component for every part of registered apprenticeship. And safety, um, <clears throat> they had less worker comp claims, lower, lower loss times, the percentages were kind of off the chart. So being that was what a very important component to it. And then also, um, I don't know any of you known people who said, oh, I was in an apprenticeship. Well, it's that reputation that you get for being part of such a, a, a quality training program. And how long would it take for business to get started or some advice for starting their program? As long as you want it to take. Uh, quite frankly, um, and I'm working with someone here today and we're working to build one. Um, I've, worked, I've worked with employers who want to build their training program three weeks from the time that we got it started to I set it up for my for approval, it got approved. It was as fast as you want it to go. And I'm here to help you with that. And um, I, if you are interested in talking about registered apprenticeship, please call me. I would certainly like to share more information, all the good parts about registered apprenticeship, and then we can start building the program. Awesome. awesome. We're going to transition to Serena so we can get some more of her feedback and perspective as we create some more just uh, innovative pipelines to keep our workforce vibrant. So Serena, we're back to you. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. I kind of like the Wizard of Oz on the screen here. Um, what challenges or obstacles did you encounter uh, with developing your internship and apprenticeship programs at Halifax Health? I'll start with internships. So we really floated that idea around probably summer of 2020. We knew there were a lot of people displaced employment-wise in the community, and we wanted to give them an opportunity to learn. We wanted to capitalize on that reputation of healthcare as something that had been a little pandemic-proof and that people still had their jobs, but at the same time, we realize most people think of doctors and nurses. They don't, they don't realize we have a whole marketing department or IT or all the support. So we wanted to figure out a way to expose them to some of the behind-the-scenes magic. I will say, for us, internships are typically unpaid. If you want paid, we just hire you. So <laughs> we figure out where we have an open role and we can probably get at whatever learning and experience you're trying to find. But for us, internships are unpaid. So we wanted to create a little bit of a rotation and help people understand behind the scenes. But I will say the managers were probably my, my first struggle. Many of them were kind of exhausted. They were afraid an intern was just something when they had to babysit. I had some departments where a lot of the team members had been furloughed and they were like, Serena, that just doesn't seem fair to my real employees to bring in an intern. So sometimes I had to work through a little bit of the mindset in terms of if you could clone yourself, what are those things that you would love to do if you just had more time in the day? They, they aren't on fire, but there's extra tasks. You would just love to spend time on. Maybe that's what you want an intern for. And, and sometimes it was a matter of just coaching them through what a, an intern could really be utilized in terms of meeting department needs. I find that still to be true. I will go to managers, and again, sometimes they have no idea what they would use an intern for. But interestingly, if I talk to the frontline staff, they have a million ideas of where they would love to have someone, even if it's stocking closets, even if it's walking a patient from the waiting room to the examination room. It, it's just those little things where the intern still gets to learn, they get to see a day in the life, now they have somebody they can ask questions of, but it doesn't have to be a massive investment of time and resources. And it, it goes Faith who said, they're not gonna be running the department, right? But helping people understand that has been, has been big. Apprenticeships, I, I am blessed. Everyone was on board with that. They saw immediately that as, well, I say that. As long as I was willing to do most of the work of getting them set up, <laughs> they very much saw the value of having the program in general. And we do a lot of education support, so that wasn't an extra cost factor for us, really. I, I know for some places, paying for some of the college training and college courses 
in a way that you have to with an apprenticeship may be something that's an obstacle, but it, it wasn't for us, and it, it even worked out well because it meant we could build in a work obligation. You know, if I pay for your college, you'll be obligated to work for me for two years after completing your degree or, or something along those lines. So there was a retention benefit as well. So I guess it's it mostly mindsets and helping people put the pieces together. All right. Uh, any best practices in managing these programs or managing the students that are within these programs? I would say just be very clear. It's again, I've got apprenticeships, I've got internships, I've got part-time jobs, I've got volunteers, and I've got students. And for a lot of people, that just blends together. But it, in my mind, it has to be distinct. And the managers have to understand if I'm coming to you and saying, hey, I'm building an internship program, would you be interested? This person's gonna need to know, all right, I, I, chances are I don't have them for more than a few months. Chances are I've got four to five general basic tasks and gonna wanna have them assigned that they can pick up all, there, there's a development and a process to it. And if I'm not clear in explaining to the managers what that looks like, it gets confused very easily. And, and I do have, a, an apprenticeship program facilitator. She's incredible, but she's kind of the, the details person. She's the one who does all the tracking of the hours and have they finished their courses and you know she reaches out to them if she's missing any data components. I don't think I could do my job without D Rivers. She is amazing. If you can get it to D Rivers, don't take mine, but, but get one for yourself. <laughs> you should have mentioned her name. <laughs> You should have kept the name a secret. Um, what, 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 is, what advice would you give to the businesses as they get started? Any advice on either the internship side or apprenticeship side? What advice to get started? I would say first reflect on how many of you raised your hands about having done an internship versus how many of you raised your hands on having currently that opportunity within your organization because there was, a, there was a little bit of disparity there, right? Many of you had that opportunity, but not many of you are offering that opportunity. And it's not difficult. I worked a lot with Volusia County Schools. They have their CTE programs and OJT programs. They've got fantastic guidelines on, it, it's like a report card plus, I guess, but when someone goes to your organization as an intern or an OJT student, they have to have certain soft skills and you want to list up the tasks they'll typically be allowed to do. And I know that's meant for high school students, but we just borrowed that framework and extrapolated to beyond that if need be. So there are so many tools out there and it's such a great opportunity for students, young adults, even even people who are not young adults, but just want to learn more about considering a different career shift. We need workforce, right? And they, they need us. So how do, how do we meet in the middle? These are great opportunities for doing that. Awesome, thank you so much. Sounds like internships and apprenticeships are the perfect bridge between these two groups. All right. They really are. Thank you, thank you so much. So uh, I want you all to look at your tables real quick. We'll create some time for questions, but I want you to kind of innovate and think about some of the information that you have. So it should be something that says tabletop discussions on your on your tables. I wish I had a banner white with me. I guess I can book. So it should be on your table. So you've heard a lot of information. You've got a lot of feedback. And then you have the experts that are in the room as well. And it will have some time for crowd questions as well. But I want you to work with your table. Uh, I think you all should be pretty buddy-buddy by this time. And to work through some of these conversations. So the first one, and we'll give you about 10, 15 minutes to kind of write out essentially a plan. So if you need to take this to your supervisor or you might be the supervisor to create it, think about what framework works best for you. Would that be a long-term apprenticeship or do you just need help over the summer through an internship? Who are key stakeholders, uh, stakeholders? Who do we need to make sure that is in the room to help us make that decision? And then is there a position that we could look at, redefine, do we need to create an opportunity, or do we need to restructure a current maybe entry level position that could be an apprenticeship or internship, all right? So I want you to take some time to talk amongst your groups and work these out. There's no 
right or wrong answers, but we have our experts in the room to help give advice as well. So uh, start working and we'll be floating around to support.